Okay, back again from PNR. Unfortunately, the rain cut me out earlier. Uh, yeah, I wasn't prepared for it. So, for an update for those who are just joining us, um, about an hour ago, oh, no, not even an hour, about three quarters of an hour ago or so, um, we had some lock ons take place. It went smoothly, it was a well organised operation. Uh, security guards have now moved to the front of the fence. Uh, we have one single lock on the front, single lock on here, single, no, a double, so two. Four, five. I'm moving along, so it's five on that side, and then over here, six, seven. Security guards now on the outside. Not sure why. There's another two here. Eight, nine. Another here. 10 and 11, 12. I'll try to get round to interview everybody if that's okay. On live stream, we have some lovely people watching from Alaska and Queensland at the moment in New York because, of course, they're awake. <laughs> <laughs> it's really handy. So, morning. Morning. Is this your first or many? First. One of first? And why? <laughs> and, and what the hell? How do you feel? That must be so difficult. Feel fan. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, but still, it's still it's an undertaking though that your average citizen doesn't do, and so when it when it's your first time you've done it, I think a lot of people wonder what is it that finally tips you over the edge and allows you to do this. I mean, it's quite a, a heck of a lot of guts to do it. You know, you're you're inside a whopping great metal barrel. You know that it's some. This is going to take anything up to 17 hours, yep. and that at some point you're going to be cut out by a removal team and then you're going to end up being arrested and taken to jail so you know that's it's not like thing you do what you do is hugely honorable and very very brave yeah don't pull your arm i'm not pulling you are just trying my hands glue to yours <laughs> <laughs> stupid why are we going to put on with this one <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And you can't really fall out when you're in a tube together, can you? That's better. Oh, that's a lot better. I'll pull you now. Oh, aren't you good? You got her all comfy. It made those backrests. Oh, you clever soul. This is logic. Who does logic designs backrests? We're going to rent him to the NHS later. Yeah. You got kids, love? Yeah, we have. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So is it kind of like, I mean, how do you, do, does your family know about what you're doing? Yeah, all my family. Your clandestine involved. life. <laughs> all the family's involved. Okay, that's good. Just, uh, even my daughter's involved, amazing. Yeah, yeah. She, she was um, standing up here at the gates before I even stood up myself. So. How old's Maisie then? Six. Seven oh. just turned. Oh, week. oh. Yeah, I bet she's proud. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a strange thing to see your mum do, though. Yeah, yeah. Of course. So we'll say hello to Rosie. Grandma do it. Yeah. My mum's here again today. Yeah. Down there. Locked on at the end? Yeah. Yeah, I've just interviewed her. Yeah. yeah, you're quite a feisty family all in all, really, yeah. aren't you? Just You've been a heck of a gift. You're a heck of a gift to the anti-fracking movement. Yeah. yeah, Louise is in a slightly more difficult predicament because of her role yeah, in yeah. work and things. So, yeah. yeah, I think people have limitations as to what they can and can't do. So, yeah, it's good to have you here. Thank you. Thank you. Morning. Morning. So, is this your 200th one or your first? My first. <laughs> okay. Don't and let that me. I know when we spoke earlier on today at the planning meeting, uh, you, you came across a little bit more nervous maybe um, about doing this. I know I would be in your shoes. I need you to move a little bit of the cycle lane. Oh, okay, sir. I'm push them back on the cycle lane. Okay. And then you're not in the cycle lane, you see something. Okay, no worries. I'll slide across here. There's no cycles. Go back where you was. No, no, he's right, though. He's right, though. But anything that keeps the cops from telling us off. So I'll just come around there. And then we can do that that way. No, it's my first of all. I'm doing this for my grandkids this week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so you're local? Yes, the state secret. Because I know the thing with this lock-on was particularly important was that, you know, the media try and portray it, and certainly Quadrilla does, going paid protesters from out of town, whereas this is very much every single one here is a local person who lives locally. Well, it's like a local lock-on, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And three councillors, too. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I think that's quite telling as well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I don't think I've ever met a councillor who would do this before today. Yeah. Well, I'd be the proud of all of us, actually. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Were but, you involved with... How, when did you find out about fracking? 
And how? Um, I actually found out through Sarah's sister Louise. Yeah. And I came up um, when we had that big first demo down at Maple Farm. February 25th? Yeah, I think so. Wow. I've been doing it ever since. Oh, wow. So that was you only just came to the movement February 25th? Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. And now you find yourself in a lock-on. Oh, well, yes. I've six years and still haven't done it. Well, yeah, you're um, braver than I. This isn't going to be the last one. No, no. And what is it that feels different about it? I mean, I know that some people say that because it can be quite soul-destroying here when we're constantly being watching the trucks fly past us and there's nothing we can do. Does this feel different to that? Well, it's our way of protesting to saying no, really, isn't it? Yeah, and uh, feeling some power and control, maybe. Because we have no control when the trucks was passed, but now you've controlled it. You know no work will get done today. No, well, no we control it because, as I say, this is our way of protest and the police won't let us protest. Yeah. They can be really violent at yeah. times. This is our way of doing yeah. it. I always point out, too, that, you know, whenever it's like, oh, horrible protest or something, you know what, what do we do? So essentially, if you look at it in a nutshell, we sit in inconvenient places, we walk very slowly, and sometimes we sit on top of trucks. Essentially, everything we do is just being in an inconvenient place at the wrong speed. So I've never seen one act of violence in six years from a protester, and yet I've seen countless acts of violence by police yeah. non-stop. I mean, this is nothing on Barton Moss, thank God. You know, Barton Moss was definitely the worst. But Crawberry had hell, you know, everywhere did. And everywhere was like this, but, you know, they seem to have, I don't know, up here since they brought in, like, it's not just our local, local police anymore. You know, they're bringing in Chorley and other areas. And they seem very young and inexperienced, a lot of them. And I've seen them lose their tempers, which I think you don't expect of the police. You know, they that we expect them to stay calm because they're here to keep us safe. I think the other day when they pulled at the rope on the tower, really surprised me because that totally put pay to the whole, you know, oh, we're here to keep you safe. Team, yeah. yeah. But, you know, they said, oh, we're here to keep you safe. And, and yet if you're trying to pull down the tower, that's exactly the opposite of keeping the guys safe. And he de-locked at that point. Yeah, he was de-locked, yeah. Oh, I was so scared. So was I when I watched it. I come down. You just knew that had you pulled it, he'd have died. Yeah. You know, there's, there's no other way around it. I mean, the, the bravery in that is just incredible. Yeah. I think we've all got sheer guts and determination. Yeah. And determin- d- determination keeps us going, it keeps us fighting. Yeah. Because yeah. we will, we will. We're going to have to knock this on the head. Yeah. It's a nasty business. Because, well, I mean, I don't know about you, but can you picture yourself just going home and giving up? No. no. Yeah. I got to ask, you know, what will you do if you lose? I'm like, we can't lose because this, the, it's not over till we win. Yeah. There isn't a lose point because we just keep going until it's done. I'll keep going. Yeah. And I'll keep going. There is no outdoor. I mean, trust me. I mean, no, no offense. Like, you guys got here this year. Like, in six years, I've been looking for the exit door, and I've discovered there isn't one. There is no exit door. You're in the sheer drop of activism. You're stuck in it. You can't unknow the risks that are coming for our kids. So, to go home would be to be negligent as parents and grandparents, I feel. You know? It's quite strongly female, this movement, I think, because of that. I think it's very much... A lot of women came to the realization, and then suddenly there was, you know, shit, the children. You know, that was yeah. the first thing. And the states, I know, um, there was a Utah midwife, and she was one of the first early warnings, which is there were too many baby graves, you know, um, early term, you know, um, births uh, that didn't make it. Everyone ignored her, and then she got the sack when she whistle blew because she checked to find out why were all these babies not making it to full term, and she checked what was the only similarity was they were all near frac sites. <laughs> And that wasn't taken seriously. And then a local stud farmer for racehorses started having birth abnormalities in his foals. Then it made headline news because foals are worth money. Yeah. Babies aren't, you know. And that really sickened me, I think, when I saw that. Uh, you know? Human life can't cut the price on it, can you? But they do. You know, it's not as much as a foal of a racehorse, you know. And that's astounding. Yeah. So they got more attention when his horses kept traveled. So, thank you for being here. Thank you. So I appreciate it. I'll check back in with you later. I thought I'd say I had to add it to a few sites so she could see what's happening this hour. Yeah. All day long, keep an eye on it. Oh, God, I absolutely will. Yeah, yeah. I look forward to seeing that one. Yeah, yeah. Thanks a lot. How are you feeling, sweetheart? Brilliant. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah. A bit rainy. Yeah. Got you the have... waterproof on, I'm fine. Yeah, yeah. You actually look quite cosy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think you're 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 better planned than most. Yeah. Right. Did I get everybody one, two? Three. Yeah. Four, five. I was, yeah. 
Checking in on you, okay, love? Yeah, I'm fine, thank you. Yes. Yeah, good. That really salty. You doing okay, love? Yeah, fine, thank yeah, you. Good yeah, good stuff. Yeah. Two, three, four, five. You look so ridiculously comfy. You look. I've got to say, it looks like if it rains, it's not good. Oh, we got a tarp next to you. Yeah, yeah. So two, four, five. I'm not letting get wet. Six. Yeah. He looks like an advert for a bed company. I know he does. He looks well covered. He looks so comfy. Look at you. You got the best of the lot. Oh, nice. Uh, Seven. Okay, Jules. <laughs> No, I'll be right. I'm sure. okay. Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 14? 13. 13. 13. 13. I found an extra person in my count. <laughs> Someone else is locked down. <laughs> Somebody's sneaking in. I came up with, I'm counting, I got to 14. I'm thinking, no, I'm sure I didn't get there wasn't 14. There was supposed to be 13. Lucky 13. That make you a witch's coven or something. <laughs> right, I haven't done you yet. You're my only one. So I'm going to come and sit and talk to you. It's good for an excuse for sitting. Morning. 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 First, second, third, 25th, lock on? Uh, second. 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 Wow. Second. Yeah, How long ago was the first? Well, last week. Wow. Last yeah. week. How different hours. is it the second time around then? A uh, bit more prepared. Know what I'm going, getting into. Yeah. Yeah, you know I mean, I'm know how my arm's going to feel the day after, yeah. which isn't pleasant. Was it a lot of ache? Um, yeah, yeah. Um, well, I was on for 10 hours and then I wow. was for about six, seven. So, yeah, it was a long day. So, and, knowing well, that, though, and then coming to it a second time, yeah. why? Because I want a better, well, I want a decent future for my children. Yeah, and yeah. And you know the pain, you know yeah. the suffering, you know you've got anything yeah. up to 18 hours yeah. in this position. It's going to be a longer lock-on because yeah. we started earlier. You know you went Cell, and yet here you are. Yeah. yeah, yeah. See, whereas I would think that, like, the first one, yeah, when you go in blind, at least you don't know what That's to it. expect. It's yeah. like childbirth. <laughs> I was just thinking that. that I remember. Well, then I've got three kids too, so. <laughs> exactly. And I always thought people who had more than one kid were clearly criminally yeah. insane. Yeah. Because after you have the first one, you think to yourself, "That's yeah. ludicrous." Yeah. Well, How does anyone, anyone have a second have child? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Well, this yes. is why we're here today. Yes, yes. And why you have three children? Yeah. I have one. Yes, and I'm not locked on. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> so before, because um, you're local, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. So before this happened, the fracking. I mean, when did you first find out about fracking? And were you in activism before? Um, I wasn't before, and um, basically I heard about it being like obviously it's starting off here and stuff like that. So obviously yeah. when it's on my doorstep, I thought, yeah. right, well, I need to take. Yeah. Steps so when did you come up to the side of the road then? Um, How soon in the action? Uh, about three months ago. Yeah, yeah. About three months. So ago. about we'd be only because we came in what January fifth. We started. Yeah. It's a bit more low key. Yeah. So yeah. That's not going to be helpful through the evening, is it? Oh. Somewhere in there. Yeah. So, your kids, how do they feel about this? Do they know? Yeah, yeah. Um, they know. And um, some support, some are a bit blase about it still. Yeah. But yeah. I think once it becomes more real, then obviously they're going to understand why. Yeah. Which hopefully will be soon. Yeah, see, I mean, I see people that wise up to it. Better. Yeah, it's like you, you see lots of people get. Um, I, I see mixed things with families. Like in some families, it's a case of like I know that there was a lady in tears because she wanted to be, but her husband asked not to, and that's because he fears for her safety. And you know, and you can only put your family through so much. Yeah. And then other ones, their family get so angry because they're never home. They get caught up in this. And then others, there's this um, a particularly elderly couple I met once, and it really made me laugh because he said to me, she, so she dragged him kicking and screaming into it, and he said, uh, "Must thank you for this." And I was like, "Oh, why? What?" And he said, "She's become very passionate about this." I said, "Oh, that's great. That's great." He said. Yes, it's, it's infecting all areas of our lives where we've rediscovered our passion. I'm like, oh, that's too much information. But it's still good, though. I think it's fabulous. I mean, but it does. It, I think it's that, um, you know, we go through our lives like just consuming shit, don't we? You know, and, and you follow this life plan that's a bit like a blueprint that somebody else made that doesn't fit you. Yeah. And, and to find life with purpose. You know, I mean, I've never been as broke in my life or, you know, I mean, I'm certainly not in the same situation I was in before, like six years ago when I joined activism. And... And there's things I miss, you know, and I certainly miss the joy 
I sometimes miss monotony and boredom. That would be nice. There isn't any. But I live this life of purpose amongst people who also live their life of purpose. And I just constantly feel emotional looking about me, seeing such honourable, admirable people that I don't think I could ever go back, you know. There's, there no. is no way back out. And you, you, I think the way society makes you feel these days is where you can't communicate with other people, where when you're around these sort of people, you can communicate with them. And it feels nice on that level to know that you're not just shut off, you're not just sat next to this person, you don't feel like you can speak to them. Yeah, you know I mean? and there is no small talk in activism. Yeah. Every conversation matters. Yeah. 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 In, 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 like I say, you know, the normal world, it's not like that. No. You could leave the next door to your neighbour and not even know the yeah. name. Yeah, yeah, you're And right. that could be for like 20 yeah. years, where it yeah. never used to be like that. Again, I saw that too at the side of the road, I remember in the early days. Um, a few older ladies who came, they came on their own very bravely, just held the signs. And I see them now as part of a huge community. And you think about, you know, things like that our elderly, I mean, particularly people retire and so on. You know, they are pretty much left to... to do to find purpose at this stage of their lives. I think, it's I think we should go to old people's homes and get them in vans and in days out should be in places like this. You know, okay. it's such a waste, isn't it? It's such a valued resource. Our That's elderly. it. Yeah. The world should definitely be more like that. I can't tell you how beautiful the lighting is behind you because <laughs> as I've been filming you, the sun's coming up oh. and the sky's got bluer and bluer <laughs> and it's just lovely and so nice not to try. Because up to that point, I was still having to watch where I was with yeah. the light was blocking it. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm going to come back and film as we go along, and uh, we've got your nice lunch bag somewhere, so we'll come and give you that when it's time. You okay? Anything you yeah. need? No, I'm all good. Good stuff. Right. So, an update from uh, Preston. Oh, by the way, people are watching in Alaska, <laughs> Queensland, and New York. Lovely. Hello, because, peeps. Because they're awake at this time of the day. Thank you for support. <laughs> right, an update from Preston Euro. I'll come up here and then pan down, which is... Uh, I don't know what time of the morning this is. Um, people were here prepping through the evening. We had a lot of meetings to get this in place. And um, we turned out probably about 2.15, 2.30. And by 2.45, 3 o'clock, um, everything was in place. We held the gates steady so the security guards couldn't come out and stop us. And then the incredible team of people who made and provided all this lock-on equipment you know it's not easy they put together these tubes and the uh, they're full of bitumen and all sorts that means many hours of cutting to get these people out hey Sean Hargreaves yeah we are owls uh, this is the uh, Preston New Road site these are the gates and we have 13 people locked on I think we have two or three as individuals and the rest are in pairs three individuals and the rest of pairs yeah so um, yeah so the crew arrived with the equipment quickly pulled up in a van threw that out if you watch my previous class you can see it. Um, to a certain extent you'll see most of that and then once they pulled it out of the van then uh, we held the gate steady um, everyone dived into position we had rehearsals a few times and then uh, today was the last rehearsals where people finished off and uh yeah, and then they locked on, and now they're in position. They expect to be here anything up to about 18 hours. It's a huge commitment for these people, really brave, uh, that they understand that they are going to be here for a very long time. It's quite chilly now, it did rain. <laughs> Fortunately, we managed to get some comfort, as best you can when your arm's stuck in a tube. Look at you two in your matching brollies and neat sequins. <laughs> You are very coordinated. I have two wheelchair users this evening, one in a chair and one who's come out of his chair. There's plenty of welfare and support. Um, and in the back of the car we've got uh, lunch bags with fruit sandwiches and water for everyone. Uh, it's quite a good crowd, decent IT stuff. Are you doing live stream or are you just uploading images, love? Uploading. Uploading images? Yeah, Great. Yeah. So if you look for Cheryl Atkinson, um, you'll find her images going up. There's been one police van and it's too early in the morning for much policing. Uh, police have got out just asked us to please be aware that it's still a main road and not to be in it. And fortunately the lock-on is behind the line. So... Yeah. 
Bye. Say hello to the nice people Bye. in Alaska who are watching it. Hello. Alaska, Queenstown and New York we have. Hello. <laughs> They're awake at this time of the day. Oh, really? <laughs> What's their day in it? What yeah. day is it, though? God knows. I don't know if they're back or forward. It's Monday. Yeah, I don't know if it's their Sunday or their Monday. Both. Yeah. I think it's late Monday. What's Wait, no, 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 yeah, no. No, it's, no, it's going into it's going into early hours Monday morning. Yeah, yeah, it will do. It's going into early hours Monday morning. I think it will do. We're in early hours Monday morning, so it can't be the same. Late, no, 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 it'll be late Fast. Sunday night. Oh, no. Tea time. Oh, they're at tea time. Yeah, oh, yeah, they're tea time? time? Okay, I'm sure someone in some other country will tell me. We don't know these things. Yeah, about 3 p.m. They're around about 3 p.m. They're around about 3 p.m. Okay. In Australia. It's quite complex. It's all getting too much. We need a world yeah. clock. So this is the viewing gallery. So. There are pot belly stoves. Plenty of sustenance. Morning. How are you doing? You're all right. Yeah, good. Have a peanut sandwich. Is there a peanut butter sandwich? Yeah, I'm making them. Oh, I really want a peanut butter sandwich. <laughs> Do you know when you didn't know what you wanted, but I knew I was hungry? Yeah. And I couldn't think what I would want if I was choosing. And now I know what I want. I want a peanut butter sandwich more than anything. Well, we really wanted pizza first of all, but I was going to oh, try to get loads we should of have called pizzas. Domino's. They're all closed to check. Of course they are. It's a ridiculous time of the day. <laughs> I hadn't even thought about that. I hadn't. Why is there not 24 hour pizza delivery? Exactly. There's, there's a gap special. in the market somewhere. Well, you could, Unless you it's because it up, it's Sunday yes. trading yeah. running Me. into Monday. Yeah, there could be. That's yeah. <laughs> No, it's 1 p.m. Monday. It's 1 p.m. Monday. I'll go back and correct them. We've been corrected. It's 1 p.m. Monday for them. <laughs> ah, I think you failed miserably. I, I think. I don't know. Actually, I do think that was rather a miracle. I didn't even know which day. You said it was yesterday. <laughs> oh, did you? Yeah. Twenty-three hours out here. Twenty-two hours. Three o'clock. It was one p.m. I said three p.m. I forgot the clocks went back an hour. Ah, well. Do you know? I know that I'm not coming to this corner to ask what time it is. That's all I know. Peanut butter sandwich. That's what I'm heading for. I love you. Thank you so much. <laughs> mm, sorry. Because today's all about a local action. There's been artwork made. This one is the locals say no fracking. This is because a lot of the media portrays it that it's out of towners or professional activists. Some great people here. Mind you, I've never been on an active site, activist site that wasn't great people. Great people by nature. Thank you, Janine Brown from Queensland. That really helps. <laughs> yeah, it's a long night, you know. And I saw earlier on the stream, the first stream was that uh, people watching from Alaska as well. So don't know what time it is in Alaska. You can you hear my name? Wait a sec. I'm in the zigzaggy bit. Oh yeah, I'm in black. That's not good. I just realised I'm probably invisible to cars. I'm going to stop filming in a minute and uh, let the battery live. These are the towers for anybody who didn't notice them. They've grown more numerous. Well, certainly it's got a lot more point. What the hell is all those pallets? Are we building another thing? I'm not discussing that. Okay. Security guards were okay. They um, started to push against the fence um, because we all stood up and leant against it. And then we let them know. If you checked my previous live stream, the one before this, which was at the start, and uh, we said to them, there's no need. We're not coming in there. We're just setting up the site. And so there's no point in them, they can't stop a lock on once it starts.
time is it now? Do we know? Five past one, thank you. Four. 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 Day one, I'm sorry. One. Queensland, it's one o'clock, they're telling me. <laughs> okay. Alaska hasn't come back with their time yet. <laughs> we just had a long discussion about it. I looked out at my notes and there's somebody going, no, it's one o'clock. They were correcting me all along and I didn't notice. So. Right, I'm going to sign off now and uh, come back in a little while and we'll do some more updates. So it's four o'clock in the morning here at Preston New Road and we have a 13 person lock on. All is well. <laughs> Why? What? They want to stay here till six o'clock. In the evening? It's 15 hours to go. Oh, just we're 15 one hour, hours. We're one hour down already. Yeah, one hour <laughs> down, 16 to go. Security guards have been fair. No one's giving anyone any trouble. There's one police van. No and all is right hurt. with the world. No one got hurt. And, uh, yeah. Hour one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. At least you get paid. They got 16 hours and no wages. <laughs> I get paid by Russia. Do you see the live stream of that guy the other day who jumped out of his car? And he's like, no, no, you're paid by a higher authority. I'm like, really? The yeah. fuck is the money then? Yeah. <laughs> Years ago, the media had us down as having Russia. We we're like rubles and vodka. That's what we get. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, you prearranged your umbrellas. Every time I gotta come back, you're gonna have a new synchronized umbrella setting, aren't you? Just to make it interesting. People are saying hello from Queensland and Alaska. Oh, hello. They're awake. It's, we had a long discussion about their time, then I realized it was actually one o'clock in the afternoon because they were telling me. It's a lot more pallets, logic. Are we making something big? How did we get these all here and no one stopped us? Because the tower, but that was in Section 6 land and now... Locals just couldn't wait to make it happen. Yeah. They're, they're no, I meant the pallets. Yeah, they just appeared. Local people said just they must want pallets and they suddenly dropped them off. For us. Actually, we and get enough... We didn't know what to do with them and suddenly, before you knew it, that appeared. Yeah. So if we just keep getting pallets accidentally delivered, we wouldn't even need to build towers because it's just a lot of pallets, really. Yeah. We'd just fill this gate. Yeah. be interesting to see how the morning starts out with the cops, though, won't it? Right, well, I'm going to sign off now, and then I'll come back in a little while with more live stream. Let's get this finished.